Following his defeat in the War of the Last Alliance, the Dark Lord Sauron was greatly diminished in power, yet his spirit lived on, bound to the One Ring, which remained in the possession of the Dúnedain Isildur, High King of Gondor and Arnor. Unable to seek out the ring and take his vengeance, Sauron remained in the shadows for centuries, recovering his strength and planning for his inevitable return to power. Though the Dark Lord was defeated, many of his orcs, trolls, and other servants survived and fled, scattering across the continent to create havoc wherever encountered. After planting a second white tree in Minas Tirith, Continuing the lineage of ancient Telperion, which once illuminated the Undying Lands, Isildur and three of his sons traveled north to take up residence in Arnor, but failed to arrive as they were attacked by orc raiders near the Gladden Fields. Unwilling to allow the ring to fall into enemy hands, his sons sacrificed themselves to hold the line, while Isildur escaped through the Anduin River. Facing a powerful current, the king was separated from the ring before being spotted and shot with arrows by pursuing orcs. With the Dúnedain killed and the orcs unaware of its presence, the One Ring of Power fell to the bottom of the river where it remained lost to the world for over 2,000 years. Meanwhile, the death of Isildur and his sons left Meneldil, nephew of the High King, as ruler of Gondor, while Valandil, his fourth child, reigned in Arnor. Dividing the royal line into two dynasties, the descendants of Anarion and his son Meneldil led the people of Gondor for two millennia, while Isildur and his son Valandil left a bloodline that held power over a united Arnor for only a few centuries, before fracturing into smaller kingdoms. Elsewhere in the continent, the Middlemen, those descended from humans who did not live in Numenor during the Second Age, were scattered throughout the Westlands, with those living in what became Gondor and Arnor intermixing with the Dúnedain, while those in and around the Greenwood became known as the Northmen. To the west and south of the Misty Mountains lived a population of tribal hillmen, later called Dunlindings, who spoke a different language to the other middlemen of the continent, and so were denied friendship and aid because they were not recognized as kin to the Dúnedain of Númenor. Living as wildmen for thousands of years, the Dunlindings expanded south and east towards the White Mountains, though some few left their more primitive homelands to make their way north, settling in Eriador, where they founded the village of Bree. Heading towards the Sea of Rune and beyond, the many tribes and nations of the Easterlings were weakened by their defeat in the War of the Last Alliance, but steadily rebuilt their strength, ever eager to fulfill their ambition of conquering the West. The same could be said for the Haradrim of the South, who lived under the influence of the powerful city-state Umbar, where the Black Numenorians loyal to Sauron remained in power. Though the Dark Lord still had allies spread throughout the continent, Mordor was lost to him as the Kingdom of Gondor used Minas Ithil, the Towers of the Teeth, and the Tower of Kirith Ungol to keep watch over the land. Having spent much of the Second Age isolated within the Misty Mountains, the Dwarves of Durin's Folk thrived in Khazad-dûm, growing immensely wealthy from their mining operations. Yet after the defeat of Sauron, loss of Mordor, and scattering of his armies, hordes of wandering orcs now populated the Westlands, with some making their home in the Grey and Misty Mountains. Along the western shores, the Lyquendi, Noldor, and Sindar Elves of Lindon lived under the rule of Lord Círdan, and spent their days building ships in the harbor of the Grey Havens, making them available to any of their people who sought passage to the undying lands of the West. Other Noldor and Sindar made their homes alongside the Sylvan in Lothlórien under Galadriel and Celeborn, while other Sylvan or Wood Elves lived in the Greenwood Forest under King Thranduil. Founded as a refuge for the Noldor Elves of Eregion, Imladris, also known as Rivendell, continued to be ruled by the Sindar, Elrond Half-Elven, who in the year 109 of the Third Age, married Celebrian, daughter to the Lord and Lady of Lothlórien. Celebrian then gave birth to twin sons, Eladan and Elrohir, in 130 TA, while their younger sister Arwen came into the world a century later in 241 TA. By the year 492, some of the Easterlings at last felt prepared to strike out against their enemies, resulting in two invasions of Gondor within a 60-year period. Though the fighting went back and forth at times, the Dúnedain proved too powerful and steadily pushed them back, with King Tarostar changing his name to Romendakil, meaning East Victor, after a great triumph in 500 TA. 
For four decades, the Easterlings appeared defeated until they launched yet another invasion in the year 541, scoring a great victory by killing the king Romendakil on the battlefield. Yet his son Turambar continued the fight even more fiercely than his father, and by 550 TA pushed the Easterlings back beyond the Sea of Rune to claim their lands for Gondor. Having defeated the invaders and established the Eastlands, the Kingdom of Gondor was reaching new heights of power while their kinsmen in Arnor were headed towards civil unrest. Following the death of King Earendur in 861 TA, his three sons went to war over the inheritance, with the oldest claiming the realm of Arthedain, while his brothers founded the kingdoms of Cardolan and Rudaur. Coming to power in the year 913, King Eärnil of Gondor spent his reign continuing a policy of expansion and so built a great fleet he used to conquer the city of Umbar in 933 TA. Unfortunately, Eärnil was lost at sea a few years later, leaving his son Kyriandil as king during a time of war, meaning he spent most of his reign defending their conquest of Umbar from the Black Numenorians and their Haradrim supporters. Kiriandil was ultimately killed during a siege of the city in 1015 TA, and so his son Hirmandakil began his reign determined to end the southern threat. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Edric Nordian, High Prince of Augustria and Commander of the Golden Legion, Fred Heartless, Knight of Iron and Ice, Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comcia, Protector of Sword and Spear, and Chris Walder, the Crimson Shadow, Master of the Dark Arts. If you'd like to help the channel, go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can sign up and gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.